Hey, what's up guys? My name is Echerno and welcome back to my C++ series. Today we're going to be talking all about the new keyword in C++ and man, man does this need talking about. If you guys missed my video yesterday about how to create objects in C++ and the really correct way to instantiate objects then definitely check that out, card there, link there. But otherwise, let's talk about new. So the new keyword is interesting because it's, it's actually quite deep. A lot of people write new and they don't really think about it, but there's a lot that goes on and it's really important that you understand that, especially since you're programming C++. The fact that you're programming C++ means that you should be caring about things like memory and performance and optimization and all, and all of that, because really, if you don't, why are you writing C++? There are so many other languages out there that you can do, especially now in 2017. Why would you be writing C++ code unless you specifically need performance or you specifically care about everything that goes on? And understanding new is very, very important, especially if you're coming from a managed language like Java or C Sharp, where memory is, first of all, cleaned up automatically for you, but also you don't get anywhere near as many choices when it comes to memory as you do in C++. So for those who do know Java or C Sharp, you're used to using new all the time. And when you go into C++, you'll probably think, oh yeah, I can see C++, not that hard, it's the same. I mean, there's a new key where I'll just create a new class. No, check out my video on how to instantiate classes if you haven't already. So the main purpose of new is to allocate memory on the heap specifically. You write new and then you write your data type, whether that be a class or a primitive type or an array. Based on what you've written, it determines the necessary size of the allocation in bytes. For example, if I write new int, then it's going to have to request four bytes of memory, allocate four bytes of memory. Once it has that number, it goes and it asks the operating system or the I should say C standard library, I need four bytes of memory. Please give it to me. And that's where the fun begins. Now we need to find a contiguous block of four bytes of memory. Now, of course, four bytes of memory is very, very easy to find. So that'll be rather, a rather quick allocation, but it still needs to find an address in memory where you have four bytes in a row. Once it does that, it returns a pointer to that memory address so that you can begin using your data and storing data there and reading and access and reading and writing and doing all that fun stuff. So you see how I just like listed off like five steps or something like that? Yeah, that's the primary takeaway from this. When you call new, it takes time. Now I did say that we had to literally look for four bytes of contiguous memory. It's not really like, it's not like it, it literally searches our memory just in a row, like a laser being like, okay, do we have four bytes free? No, I'll look in the next slot. There's something called a free list, which actually maintains addresses that have bytes free. Another story for another video, but it's not like, it might not be as slow as you think. It's obviously written to be rather intelligent, but it is still quite slow. But that's the primary takeaway. New basically finds a block of memory that is big enough to accommodate our needs and then gives us a pointer to that block of memory. Let's take a look at some code. What I've got over here is a very basic class. It's just got a string name, that's it. I'm gonna scroll down over here and we'll take a look at the new keyword. First and foremost, just like we create integers normally by doing this, we can also choose to actually dynamically allocate that memory and create it on the heap by using the new keyword. So what we can write is int pointer b, because remember, as I said, new returns a pointer to the memory that you've allocated equals new int and that's it. That is a single four byte integer allocated on the heap and this b is storing its memory address. If I wanted to allocate an array instead, then I would add square brackets and just type in how many elements I wanted. So in this case, 50, which means we need 200 bytes of memory, 50 times four, four being the size of each integer. If we wanted to allocate our entity class on the heap via the new keyword, we will write code like this or this alternatively. We don't need to use parentheses for the, for the default constructor, but we can and I usually do. If we wanted an array of entities instead, we could do that by just using square brackets and there we go. That's basically new, right? That's how you use the new keyword. Let's talk about it a little bit more. With classes, the new keyword does two things. It doesn't just look at entity, see how big entity is. In this case, it's a string. So that's, I think like 28 bytes or something like that. Don't quote me on that. I'm just guessing from memory. It multiplies that by 50 and it asks for a block of that many bytes. In the case of an array though, you'll actually get a block of 50 entities just con contiguously in memory. So this is actually kind of like allocating 50 entities on the stack 
just in a row. It's a little bit different because you're still allocating on the heap, but each entity in this example won't really be in another memory address. You have your block of memory, which is 50 entities just, just in a row. If we go back to, to this just being a heap allocated single entity object, then by writing this new keyword, we not only allocate enough memory on the heap to store this entity, we also call the constructor. That's the other important thing that the new keyword does. It not only allocates the memory, it also calls the constructor. Now behind the scenes, all new really is, and you can see what I've done here is I've just, if you right click on new, you can go to definition and you'll see what this operator new actually is. First of all, you'll see that it's an operator. New is just an operator, just like plus or minus or equals, it's an operator, which means that you can actually overload the operator and change its behavior. We'll talk about overloading operators very, very soon, link in the description card on the screen, all that jazz. But second of all, you can see that it's, it's literally just function and this is the size that it takes. That's how much it allocates. It returns a void pointer. We might talk about void pointers in a separate video, but basically a void pointer is just, a, it's a pointer with no type. A pointer is just a memory address. So of course, it like a pointer doesn't really need a type. It needs a type for you to be able to manipulate it probably the way that you want to. But at its core, a pointer is just a memory address. It's just a number. So why would it need a specific type like int or double or entity? But anyway, you can see that we return a void pointer. So it returns a pointer. So it takes in a size and it returns a pointer to that allocated block of memory. But what new actually does behind the scenes, and strictly speaking, this is actually dependent on the C++ library. So of course, if you wrote your own C++ compiler with your own C++ library, you could theoretically make it do anything you wanted. But Usually, usually calling new will call the underlying C function malloc, which stands for memory allocate. And what this will actually do, you'll note, is take in a size of how many bytes we want and return a void pointer. So that's really all it does. So that being said, this code is actually kind of equivalent to if we had just written malloc size of entity like that. And then of course, cast this back into an entity, something we wouldn't have had to do in C but we do in C++. But the difference between these two lines of code, the only difference between these two lines of code is the fact that this will actually call the entity constructor, whereas what this will do is purely allocate the memory and then give us a pointer to that memory, not calling the constructor. You should not be allocating memory in C++ like this. There are some situations in which you might want to do that. We might talk about them later, but for you right now, if you're watching this video because you don't know what operator new is, use new. Because this of course won't call the constructor and it's also way more code and it's just harder to read and this is really the way that you should be doing it. The last thing that I'm gonna mention about new for today is that when you do use the new keyword, you have to remember that you must use delete. So once we allocate all these variables like B and E, we have to use the delete keyword, which is also an operator. If you go to the definition of that, you can see it's also an operator. It takes in a block of memory and a size. It's just a regular function, which calls the C function free and actually frees the block of memory that, that was malloced. This is important because when we use the new keyword, the memory is not released. It's not marked as free and it's not put back into that free list so that we can call new and allocate it again until we call delete. We have to do that manually. There are, of course, a lot of strategies in C++ to automate this in some form. And there are simple strategies, like kind of scope-based pointers and advanced strategies like reference counting. We'll get into all of that stuff in the future. But just keep in mind, if you use new like this in a raw way, you have to use delete. And I do plan on talking about the intricacies of all this memory management in the future. Once we actually start working on a project and writing code, which is actually gonna be very soon, so get excited, everything will be revealed, I'm sure, and you'll see many examples. In the case of B, because this was allocated by using the array operator, keep in mind, by the way, that this new that takes in an array operator is actually a slightly different function. If we allocate using new with square brackets, we should be calling delete with square brackets like this, because there is a delete operator with square brackets like that, okay? So that's another rule. If you allocate using new with square brackets, because you've allocated an array, delete using the square brackets. If you don't, then just use delete without the square brackets. One more thing that new actually supports is something called a placement new, and that is where you actually get to decide kind of where the memory comes from. So you're not really allocating memory in this case, you're just calling the constructor and initializing your entity in a specific memory address. And the way you do that is just by writing uh, parentheses like this and then specifying a memory address such as, well, B. In this case, 
I mean, it would theoretically work because I'm assuming that entity is gonna be less than 200 bytes. It definitely will be because it's just a string. But yeah, this it's gonna confuse like all this code and really, really we'll talk about placement new in the future in more detail on how you can actually use it to optimize your code quite a bit. But for now, I just wanted to show you what the syntax kind of looks like and how it works. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can hit that like button. You can also help support this series and make sure more awesome episodes are made by going to patreon.com forward slash the channel. I've got a Discord server. There'll be a link in the description below. We can talk about all this stuff. Patrons get special like server roles and also a special channel where we actually talk about these videos and plan the next videos. And it's kind of like very behind the scenes and very detailed, very cool. So definitely check that out and become a patron and help support this series. I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.